If you're not getting the results you want from ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, or any other AI model for that matter, it's your fault. I know it sounds harsh, but this is the truth. See, you need to think of these models like very smart PhD students that have just left university. Technically, they're very smart, but without any context or some real direction, they're absolutely useless for helping you in your business. If you're new here, my name is Nico. We run a community with over 500 entrepreneurs and small agency owners where we help them, teach them, and support them rank number one in the AI overviews, GPT search, and perplexity to getting organic traffic that converts into real leads for their businesses using some of the strategies that I'm gonna show you today. So in this video, I'm gonna break down a three-step prompting framework that works practically every single time in increasing the quality of the output when you're using an AI for a certain task. Oh, and I nearly forgot. At the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you two incredible free tools that are gonna create the perfect prompts for you every single time in a matter of one single click. So you'll wanna stick around for that. So let's get to it with number one. And that is defining the role. And why do we wanna define a role to an AI when they're so smart anyway? Well, think about it this way. Let's say you are tasked with finding the right person to help you rank your business locally in a certain location. You might look on any job marketplaces or LinkedIn and sure, maybe a digital marketing manager might do the job. They will definitely understand some of the basics of local SEO, at least you'd hope so, but you're probably gonna do a much better job if you hire a local SEO expert. It makes sense, right? So why wouldn't you use that same fundamental understanding with your AI that you're using? If we use GPT Voro, for example, we know that it's trained on over 200 billion parameters and probably the parameters that are useful to the task can be illustrated in this green circle. Now, a very simplistic illustration of what I'm trying to get through here, but if you think about it, for me, it kind of makes sense. We only really want to focus on the information that the AI has about local SEO. The rest, we don't really need. We don't want to focus on storytelling or how long do blue whales live for. I know that's silly, but you get the idea. We want to kind of put blinders on the GPT or the other AI to focus on the task at hand with the information at hand, which is all about local SEO. Now, there's a lot of debate about this online where it actually, whether it actually works or not, but personally, I find that it always just steers the AI in the right direction. Number two is context. Let's say in this metaphorical example, we do hire that local SEO expert in-house now. Now, if he rocks up the first day of work and you just tell him, great, rank our business number one, he's going to look at you with a blank face and go, uh, great. I need some more context though. So if you're a plumbing business, you probably wanna know exactly what type of services you offer, which locations you wanna rank in, what type of leads do you want? For example, it's still SEO, but a vastly different strategy if you want residential leads against commercial leads. Commercial leads, the keywords might be, for example, plumbing for office businesses or for hospitals, as opposed to plumbing for kitchen sink or 24 hour emergency plumbing home services. Still SEO, but a very different strategy. That's why context is so important here. And when it comes to context, it's never too much. There's never too much. The more, generally, the better. It's that same, it's that classic saying that you hear that you hear a lot when it comes to coding. Garbage in, garbage out, where the quality of the output is directly related to the quality of the input. By putting more context, you're improving the input. And talking about the output, that brings us to number four, and that is defining the output. Well, what do you want this in? Do you want this in a business plan, in a 30-day strategy, in a table format, in a slideshow, in a joke, in a song? Now, sure, the last two might not really make sense, but you get the idea here. The more you define that output, the happier you'll be with that output because it'll meet your needs, at least the needs you think you need. Let me show you the difference that it makes. For example, let's say I'm trying to rank this business here. If I don't use any of the framework and I just give it the URL and say, help me rank this business locally from an SEO perspective. That is with none of the strategies that we talked about, no role, no context, no output. Let's see what it gives us. And GPT is still pretty smart. It might give us some one or two good strategies. Um, let's see, it's saying Google My Business, claim and fully optimize Google Business, not bad, ensure a nap consistency, sure. Local keywords, conduct keyword research based on dog trainer in Sydney. Well, that is the first mistake. And that is because we haven't given it the context. This business is actually in Melbourne, right? Um, content publishing, 
review management, and all the basic things, right? Now let's use the three-step three step framework, providing it role, the context, and the output, right? We're gonna give it the same URL, but we're gonna give it the role first. I want you to act like a expert local SEO, and you're gonna help me rank this business. Now the context. This is a dog training business located in Melbourne, and they provide a series of services, including puppy school, leash reactivity, obedience classes, and they pride themselves on doing ethical dog training. That is the context. I could probably add a lot more context. Context doesn't just have to be words, by the way. It can be your Google, you can be your Google Search Console data in there. The more context, the better, but let's just leave it at that. Now, please give me a strategy with the lowest hanging fruit that I could do to improve the SEO now, and then maybe a 14 to 30 day plan of what I should be doing after. So I've defined the output. And you see that I haven't really gone and provided a huge prompt, but just a little more definition, we'll see that it will improve the output so much better. Okay, so low hanging fruit, Google Business Profile, we need to claim it and use words like Puppy School Melbourne, Leash Reactivity Dog Training Melbourne already. We're getting a lot more defined output and a lot more tailored to what we want. Uh, add service areas. So because we told it we want to rank in Melbourne, it understands that you should probably add a service area of Richmond, Hawthorne, Fitzroy, Kew, and all these other things. Perfect. High quality photos. It's even getting to uh, <laughs> the on-site SEO. So it's had a look at it and told us what we should do. Create separate pages for each core services, which it has, but that's okay. It's even telling me to run a page speed insights. Now, the other one didn't recommend that. That is a very critical thing because this website might be loading slow and therefore I need to speed it up a little bit. Let's see the 14 day action plan, optimize Google business profile, rewrite title tags, publish three new services pages. And then 30 day growth plan, it's given me a bit of a content strategy, KPIs and all these other things. Now, not now already with a tiny bit of an improvement in our framework, we've vastly improved the output. Now, let me show you two free tools that are gonna take this a step further and you're not going to have to worry about even how to generate the prompt. They'll do it for you, but I still think understanding the prompt is really good. So we're going to grab this prompt that I tried to do, that I tried to uh, enhance, and we're gonna go over to Prompt Cowboy. As of this the time of this recording, this is completely free. You just need to make an account. I highly recommend that you do so. We're going to place the prompt in here and I've just got a standard prompt. You can see that I can choose prompt for reasoning models, prompts for deep research, for custom agents and things like that. I'm just gonna leave it standard and I'm gonna hit enter. And this thing, it's gonna do its thing. I'm sure it's trained with a lot of backend data and it's going to provide me an incredible prompt. Let's have a look. Situation, otherwise known as role. You're a local SEO uh, strategy specializing in service-based businesses in Melbourne, metropolitan area, helping on, <laughs> focusing on helping small ethical services to improve the visibility. You can see everything here. Incredible. That is an incredible prompt. Uh, let's test this out and see the differences between all the other ones, right? I can open directly to ChatGPT. I'm gonna paste that in there. I do need to give it the website so it doesn't get confused. Because this was a lot more defined, it's telling me the primary keywords, the secondary keywords. Obviously, it'd be good for me to double check these keywords with some sort of SEO tool, but already I'm getting an understanding of a much more detailed strategy, where to use them, H2, H1s, 100%, technical wins, and an action plan and a lot, a lot more detailed content plan. Week three, week four, here are the blog posts, uh, video content, record short clips. Again, that's part of SEO, I suppose. And you can see it's a lot more detailed. So that is number one, Prompt Cowboy. It's been one of my favorite recently. And finally, I've made my own prompt. It's called the Prompt Improver. You can look it up in the uh, custom GPT marketplace. I'm going to use the same prompt that I had before that I gave to Prompt Cowboy. Gonna go back to our prompt improver. I'll leave a link for it below as well as everything that I've talked about. I'm gonna hit enter. And what I like about this custom GPT is that it's asking more information from you. The more information you give it, the better your output will be. For example, it's asking clarifying questions. <clears throat> Do you have access to any tools like Google Search Console, Analytics, SEMrush? Knowing what's already working will help prioritize. 
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Competitor awareness. Are there any local competitors you're aiming to outrank? Beautiful. Resources and skills. Uh, will you be doing the SEO implementation yourself? And then content capacity. Are you able to write the blog content regularly or not? So it's asking a lot more information from me, which will result in a much better output. And let's see if it's any better. I'm going to give it all the data from the Google Search Console account for this website. And I'm going to say, yes, I've got access to Google Search Console. I've given you the past three months data from that account. Do some research online for the competitors. I want to rank anybody that's doing dog training services in Melbourne. I'm doing the SEO myself and I can maybe write three to four blog posts a week. Let's see if by giving the GPT more information, it should then come back and rewrite an even better prompt for me. Uh, you're a local SEO expert and experience in ranking service-based businesses in a competitive urban market. So already I'm getting a lot more focused here. Recent Google Search Console data shows uh, structure output, boom. And because it kind of has the prompt there in the same conversation, I could tell it to, yes, go ahead. Nice, and I get a bit of a checklist to do one for, to fix the SEO, to improve it, blog content strategies, ideas, review citations, which is local backlinks, local citations, uh, 15 to 30 day building authority and scalability. Perfect. Even a summary of a checklist. You can already see that the output is much better because we've provided it the role, we've given it some context and we've defined the output. Now that you know how to create an incredible prompt for practically any situation that you want to use AI for, I highly recommend you use these kind of prompts to write better content. And in fact, I've done a whole video here that will turn your project's GPT into an incredible content copywriter that's gonna help you write content that not only brings you organic traffic, but turns into qualified leads. So I recommend you watch this video now.